Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com and in this video I want to talk to you guys about how to get beautiful detail shots of cars with a single strobe setup. Now I did the shoot earlier today with my new Godox Octobox and I highly recommend it. Um, if you don't have a Bowens mount strobe, I would recommend getting the uh, Apollo Orb from Westcott. That's what I was using before. Very similar setup. But now let's get started. I want to show you the gear, some tips and tricks, and how simple the setup is. So we have the Godox Octobox in that box in the middle. We have the light stand, and then we have the Explorer 600 and my Nikon D800 with a polarizer filter on it in the case up top. Now for this interior shot, you can see as I spin the polarizer, the reflections on the windows, the gauges, and the steering wheel changes. So I highly recommend using a polarizer whenever shooting cars. I have a couple of videos talking about this, uh, not including strobes, and polarizers are very effective regardless of what automotive content you're shooting. A big reason I like this setup so much with the Explorer 600 TTL is because it's very useful in run gun situations. I can use this indoors or outdoors with the lights on or off during daytime, during nighttime, and I want to give you a quick rundown of my settings. I was shooting with a 24 to 70 lens at around f8 for almost all of these shots. I had my shutter speed set to about 1 4,000th just to kill all the ambient light. Um, and I had my strobe set to TTL. Now, if you don't have a TTL strobe or high speed sync, you can easily shoot at like one uh, 200th of a second and then, you know, F11 to F22, depending on uh, your lens's range, to kill as much ambient light as possible um, to get as much detail from the strobe. So, depending on your setup, you should be somewhere around F8 to F22 and one 200th of a second or higher. Um, if you're just starting out or have some lower budget gear, I would recommend trying this at night or indoors with as little ambient light as possible. Uh, and that will be your key to success for photos like this because you want everything to be black except for the details that you highlight with the strobe. Now, let me show you the setup for the GTS shot. What I did was I raised the Explore 600 with the Octobox a little bit higher than the logo, pointed it down slightly, and then shot from a lower angle. Now, what I'm gonna talk about soon and what you have to keep in mind is the angle of the reflection. So think about when you look at yourself in a mirror or when you're trying to look at someone else through a mirror, that's how you have to think of the light. You have to make sure that you don't get it in your shot or if you do wanna get it, then you have to um, place your light accordingly. So as you can see here, I have the light placed to the left of the Miata rear bumper and you can see this giant reflection uh, and the outline of the octagon in the Miata rear. Now what I'm gonna do is move the light slightly and then I'm gonna move my camera also, so in the angle of the reflection, you can't see the light. So as you can see from the back, you see that huge reflection, but as you move up and point the camera down, the reflection starts getting thinner and thinner, and boom, it goes away. So keep in mind, you have to place your light and your camera accordingly to not get those reflections. And as you can see, there's a huge difference in the shots, and sometimes it is actually nice to incorporate the reflection in your photo. Now, some of the shots, you won't be able to get rid of the reflections everywhere because there's parts of the car sticking out, like the mirror here on the Ferrari. You can see that, and that's really easy to clone out in Photoshop or Lightroom. So keep in mind when you're shooting smaller things, especially when it's all the same color and paint reflection can be cloned out easily. So super easy setup there. Now, shooting interiors, usually what I do is I drop the window and I make the height of the uh, Octobox basically the exact height of the window, but with a convertible, it's much easier because you can just put the roof down and you're all set. Now, same thing for the emblem of the Ferrari, just place it and the closer you place your light, the softer it's gonna be and the larger the reflection, so then you can get um, as much of the car as possible. So the larger your light source is or the closer it is, the better. So if you wanna do big parts of a car, you're doing trucks or really big wheels, I would get a much larger Octobox, but those are the basic tips that I want to give you. One, use a polarizer to get rid of, his, of uh, reflections and change the light a little bit. This really brings out a lot of detail or hides maybe some things you don't wanna show. Uh, then the other thing is the reflector and diffusion size. So if you're shooting big cars or big parts of cars, you of course want a bigger diffuser. And then the angle of your light. Keep in mind, it's just like a mirror and it's very simple to uh, figure out where to place it. Just, you know, if you can turn on the modeling light and then you can see it before you even take the shot to help you figure that out. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I just wanted to share some of the fundamentals and some shots that I got with behind the scenes footage. I can do a more in-depth review of any of this gear if you like, and feel free to send me a DM on Instagram at a car photographer if you have any further questions and want my assistance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe, it really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.